Let's now talk about the next group of Ionic components. Pop-ups, pop-overs, action sheets, loading, spinners, and gestures. That's a big mouthful. All of them do have something in common, especially pop-ups, pop-overs, action sheet, and loading have something in common. Spinners and gestures are a way of supporting these. Um, let's look at these in a bit more detail in this uh, lecture. I will look at pop-ups and loading in more detail in the lecture. Popovers and action sheets have something similar uh, in the way they are approached. It's very easy to read the Ionic documentation to understand how to make use of them within your application. So what is common between pop-ups, popovers, action sheets, and loading messages? All of these involve overlaying content on the existing user's screen and they are popped up so that the user cannot interact with the standard screen anymore until and unless they respond to this uh, element that is put on top. So if you have a pop-up, the user is expected to respond to the pop-up or if you have a loading message until the loading message is taken off, the user cannot interact with the screen. Similarly, when a popover comes up, the user is expected to respond to the popover by selecting one of the items in the popover. And similarly for the action sheet. So when these come up on the screen, they grab your attention and they expect you to respond. Now, what this means is also that we need to provide a method of showing and hiding these as and when required. JavaScript to the rescue. So you need to support all of these in JavaScript. You create them in JavaScript and then bring them up in JavaScript and then hide them in JavaScript in response to user interactions with the screen or in response to events that occur within your system. Many of them provide a way for the user to interact with them. So maybe they may provide a group of um, buttons on the screen to which you need to click uh, in order to respond to the um, to the element that has been overlaid. Now, the content of these, whether it's a pop-up or a pop-over or an action sheet or loading, could be described using a template. It could be a template that is described as a string or could be a template URL that would be a file, a HTML file that is stored in your templates. Either way, you should be able to pop up and show the um, the corresponding uh, item on the screen. Now, all these in Ionic are supported through services. So you need to do a dependency injection of each of these as a service. So you would see Ionic pop-up, Ionic pop-over, Ionic action sheet, Ionic loading. These have to be dependency injected into your controller before you can make use of them within your JavaScript code. We will see this uh, when we look at the exercise that follows this lecture. So given that now we understand uh, how each of these are required to be supported, let's look at a couple of examples to understand how we can make use of them within our app. In particular, I will show you an example of a pop-up and an example of a loading. Then we'll look at spinners and how you support users' gestures on the screen. Here is a pop-up example that I represent on the screen. In this case, I am using the pop-up in order to show a confirmation message on the screen for the user. When the user deletes an item from the favorites, then I pop up this confirmation message on the screen and I expect the user to click on either the OK button to proceed with the pop, the deletion of the item or the cancel button in order to cancel the delete. Look at how we support this in the JavaScript code. So you see that we are creating a confirm pop-up by calling ionic pop-up dot confirm. So the ionic pop-up supports four different functions, show, hide, confirm, and alert. So you can uh, pop up a general uh, uh, pop-up or a confirm pop-up or an alert pop-up 
onto the screen. The confirm pop-up is what I am using in this particular example. Now, when the user interacts with that pop-up, either by clicking on the cancel or the OK button, you need to handle that. And that is what is handled by the second part of the function that we show there. So the confirm pop-up dot then. So look at the use of the promises. Inside there, there is a function that you need to implement. This function receives a RIS as a parameter, the result as a parameter. If it is true, then that means that the user clicked on the OK button. If it is false, then the user clicked on the cancel button. So that is how you recognize which button the user clicked in the confirm pop-up. So correspondingly, you're responding to the user's interaction with that pop-up by appropriately executing the code. When the user clicks on the OK button, you are deleting that item. If not, you don't carry out the delete action. Here is another example of a overlay that you do on your screen. Now, interestingly note, in all these cases, you can still see the user's screen in the back, but you cannot directly interact with them. So that's the way these um, pop-ups or popovers or action sheets or loading is designed. They are supposed to overlay. You can still see the underneath. Now, when you have seen models, models, you have seen a similar approach there. So model also belongs to this category. It just so happened that I covered models along with forms, but technically it belongs to the same category as pop-ups and uh, uh, the rest that we are covering in this lecture. Let's look at the loading example. So in the loading example, you see that I am using the ionic loading service. It must have been injected into my controller, obviously. Then I'll call the ionic loadings show method and then supply the template as a parameter to the show method. So in this case, I am using template, which is described, uh, which is uh, defined as a string here. So inside the template, I am using an ion spinner. Here is a situation where I am using a spinner. What is the spinner? When you look at the loading message on the screen, you can see the circle going around. I'm pretty sure if you have used a mobile device, you have seen these kind of uh, uh, interactions on the screen. So this continuous circling indicates to you that something is going on in the background. So the loading message is often used to give the information to the user that the app is working on the data Maybe it is retrieving the data from a server and needs some time for the data to be to be uh, uh, received and the change to be effected in your application. So in that case, you will pop up a loading screen onto the uh, device's screen. And also you saw the use of the ion spinner. The ion spinner has various options. You can, if you declare the ion spinner without any attributes, then the default ion spinner for the mobile platform will be used. So if in this example, I'm showing you the default spinner for the iOS platform. For the Android platform, it will be a circle that is going around. You can also custom define your spinners. Uh, Ionic provides a few options for you to use your own variety of spinner if you so choose within your application. The last part that we will talk about is gestures. When you are talking about a mobile device, you obviously expect users to interact with the device's screen using their thumbs or any other finger that is convenient to them. Um, I'm pretty sure there are people that use more than two fingers on their mobile device sometimes. Um, so, when the user performs a gesture on the screen, typically a swiping gesture or a uh, hold uh, for a period of time and then lift your finger gesture or tapping gesture or a double tap gesture, you want to be able to respond to that user's gesture. This is supported in Ionic through a bunch of attributes that you can give to various elements that you use within your um, uh, user interface screens. 
the various uh, HTML elements there. So you can use the corresponding attribute. So you can use on hold, on tap, on double tap, on touch, on release, on drag up, on drag right, on drag left and, and drag down and on drag. Similarly, on swipe left, on swipe right, on swipe up and swipe down and swipe. So a whole bunch of these gestures are available to you. How do you make use of them? Let's look at an example that you, that is shown in uh, in the uh, slide there. Here I am using the on swipe left gesture. So when the user performs the on swipe left gesture, I have specified that the delete favorite method in my controller should be called. So these attributes, when that cor corresponding gesture occurs, Ionic will end up calling the method that you specify as part of the um, attribute there. So in this example, I have specified the delete favorite as the function to be called when the user swipes left on the item. So this is a swipe left gesture for deleting an item from my list of favorites that I am supporting in my application. So with this, We'll move on to our next exercise. In the next exercise, we will see the use of pop-ups. We'll see the use of loading. We'll see the use of spinner and also gestures within the application. Now, as you move on to the second assignment, you will be expected to use a popover and some other features that I haven't explicitly explained to you, but you can easily consult the Ionic document for that purpose.